really defined. Look at it going up and down the right hand side. Very undefined. And you might not be able to see, but the, the tightness of the junction between the dermis and the epidermis on the left hand side is somewhat blurred. It's much more defined on the right hand side. But the most important thing about these two pictures is if you look at the, where the dermis meets the epidermis on the left hand side, although it undulates, it is fairly flat. Look at it on the right hand side. Can you see those like fingers of dermis sticking up into the epi epidermis? Those are called dermal papillae. They are characteristic of baby skin. It is, it is the way that the dermis feeds the epidermis. So it increases the surface area of the contact between the dermis and the epidermis. So nutrients and oxygen go to the epidermis through these because you have a bigger surface area because it's, it's um, undulating. And you notice that very few on the left hand side, more on the right hand side. So what we've done is we've induced changes, molecular changes in the skin that is kind of telling the skin what to do. And what you've resulted in is, is skin that is acting much younger. So you can actually see the differences that we now know come from that, that the molecular data that you've just seen that we generated. So it kind of completes, completes the circle. We see the fours and afters. We dug into, the, into what might be going on in the molecular biology and then kind of completed the circle by actually looking at what role of the skin actually acts like, how it could be different, and it actually um, replicates what we saw on the, on the uh, molecular side. That's why we see pictures like this. You can imagine now from that histology side, that skin is, is healthier and younger. It actually, actually has changed. And that's why you can see results like this, why you can see results like this. You can't generate unless you do what we've just described. And like this, this is interesting. I mean, really, really the, the AMPMD must be taken. This, this is an incredible picture because AMPMD must really be telling, messaging the skin in such a way to get changes um, to occur like this. And now we know what those messages are. So, we are going to keep on rolling. <laughs> and where are we going to roll? Lips. On others, of course. So, lips. There they are, right out there, right on the front of your face. <laughs> We look really silly without them. <laughs> very important. <coughs> very exposed. The, the thickness of the skin on your lips is, is, is much more sensitive, obviously, um, than the skin in other places. It's very exposed, sitting right out there. I mean, I joke about it, but they really are, are exposed. Like, and to me, they're almost set. They're almost the first indicator that you might be in trouble. I mean, if you go out on a really hot day and you don't have um, any sun protection on, it's your lips that you, 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 you first get the sense something's wrong, right? They, they begin to dry out, they feel dry, but then they can even start to burn. You can feel the tingling around them. So, so they really do need a lot of attention, but the problem with them is they age. And they're very strong indicators of aging because they are so sensitive and so exposed. So they really are like a telltale sign of the way that our skin is aging. And as you can see here, they change in shape. And they change in shape for the very same reasons as our skin ages. So we have a reduction in collagen, elastin, fibrillin. And what happens is because we get a reduction in those proteins, we begin to lose structure. And you can actually see that um, happening here. And when you lose that structure, you lose a couple of things. One is that you lose volume. Another one is that you lose shape. So you can see that the lips flatten out because you don't have everything you need there behind them to keep that shape going. And also you lose a lot of moisture because as all of these things happen, you get a reduction in barrier function. You lose a lot more moisture during the day. And so that even affects the situation more because when you lose that barrier function, you're more exposed to um, outside elements like the sun or like anything else that might be in the atmosphere. So you, you keep getting more and more exposed. So it's almost like a, a cyclical event that you get into a kind of a downward spiral. So. Oh. <laughs> 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 
I never saw quite what to say about that. Uh, so, so, is this where we should be heading? Uh, I'll let everyone decide that for themselves. Um, but the answer is no. Um, I think what we want to do is from that previous slide, we want to take what we saw on the right, which was the lips that had lost their shape and lost that volume and were losing moisture, and reverse that process. We don't want to turn into, I'm not even sure what the word is for that, but we don't want to turn into that. And in fact, society in general is turning away from that craziness as well. We want lips that look young and healthy. So what are we going to do? Uh, we are going to uh, roll. And this is it, our uh, um, lip serum. Um, there are three important things in here. Um, to stimulate that collagen, there are peptides in here. Peptides are great because what they are, um, are messengers. They are the body's own messengers that the body sends out. Just to give you an idea of of how that works. For example, if you if you get a wound, if you just cut yourself, what happens is the skin gets damaged, proteins get broken down, and they get broken down into small fragments. And often those small fragments of the proteins, which are peptides, act as signals which go out and tell other cells that there is damage. Those cells come in and help repair the wound. That's what peptides do, peptides are messengers. And what we've been able to do is to generate those messages in small peptides, and we've isolated the peptides that can message, we need more collagen, we need more elastin. And those are the kind of peptides that we use, which is exactly what your lips need to, to have, because that's what they're losing. Um, lycopene and vitamin E are in here as well. Lycopene and vitamin E, what they're doing there is they're acting as antioxidants to protect against future, future damage, to cut down on free radicals, and also to add moisturization. Moisturization is key. So two key things we're doing here, adding moisture, giving you back that barrier function, but also trying to repair the damage that's already happened. And most importantly here, of course, is rolling. Because as you've seen, the rolling actually stimulates the very genes that we're, we're, we're losing the function of here. Stimulating that collagen, stimulating those nutrients. And this is what you can see. So this is um, somebody who had pretty regular lips, you can see the effect there. First of all, you can see the moisturization. So this isn't lip gloss, this is just a product. So I, I, I've spoken to a lot of people in the last month about lips, obviously. And um, I have seen some great lips, by the way. <laughs> but people keep running up to me, look at my lips, look at my lips. <laughs> it's very rewarding and it hasn't ever happened before. <laughs> But look at the difference here. Um, uh, and even, even though this, this, so this I think was probably over about six weeks. So that isn't lip gloss. That's the moisturization that now the, the lips have. But also, you can see that, and I mean, this is incredible. You, you can actually see some changes in the shape. I think you would agree that the shape on the right hand side is beginning to change. And I, I wasn't sure whether this was going to happen when, when we started all of this. I knew that we could stimulate the right things like collagen and give the moisture back and all of that. I didn't know whether you could actually reverse the shape issue. I knew we could change, probably change the volume, but I didn't know whether the shape would come back. But in fact, I think because the structure of the lips is always there, when you fuel the engine, when you put gas in that engine, it goes back to that shape. And that seems to be the case. Here's some great ones here. And, and what, what people have said to me is that, you know, they're, they're doing um, the rolling and applying um, the serum at night, but in fact, using the serum as well just to put on, on your lips because it's a great way to add that moisture in, even like in the morning, or I've had somebody yesterday was saying they put it on like three times during the day because it's just a, almost like a lip balm because it, it adds and feels so great and adds that kind of... Um, feeling of moisture when you put it on. That's the lycopene and the vitamin E really kicking in there. But in the long term, using the roller is then building, building that structure back. And using that lycopene and that vitamin E and of course the peptides all come together to produce these incredible results. So that